Espionage played a huge role in World War II. Reconnaissance, industrial sabotage, the Enigma machine, and a million other aspects of spycraft were a critical part of the war. So why has it been almost entirely left out of the Axis and Allies series? Today we're going to give you some house rules that just might fix that. Let's make it hot. A few months ago, I had the incredible opportunity to interview Larry Harris, the creator of Axis and Allies. In the course of that interview, I mentioned house rules, and we actually got talking about rules for espionage. I didn't know it at the time, but I opened a bit of a can of worms. So I got a ton of feedback about house rules in general, and specifically about espionage. So after we finished our complete series on air combat and sea combat, we decided to revisit a few house rules, and espionage seemed like a good place to start. So let's go. We all love Axis and Allies, and today we're looking at a possible set of house rules that can incorporate a taste of the world of spycraft into this great game. First, a few notes about house rules. If you're new to Axis and Allies, this video is not for you. You need to know the rules before you can break them. You're going to need to watch this video and get comfortable with everything in it. It's our complete how to play for Axis and Allies. When you're done with that, get a few games under your belt and come back. Next, I developed these house rules with a friend of mine, John Bosch. John's one of the top players in the game. He's won two major Axis and Allies tournaments, including the 1942 second edition tournament at Gen Con in 2018, where he beat, well, me. Bosch! We play tested these rules last night and, well, we learned a lot. Now, some of the community don't think that folks should share house rules widely until they've been thoroughly tested. But wait, how do you get rules thoroughly tested if you're not allowed to share them with anybody? I'm not suggesting that we've run this a million times or that we've thought of every possible complication that's come from these ideas or that these ideas are even entirely original. I share these with you today with the hopes that you'll give them a try, have some fun, and maybe spark some creativity. Finally, let's talk about what makes a great house rule. In my opinion, a solid house rule does three things. It adds to the game by making it more fair and more engaging, and it makes sense in the game by being on theme. Don't come in here with an alien invasion of France, they've got enough problems. It has to be easy to implement and should work for as many versions of the game as possible. That's four things, Gary. Wait, oh, I'm, hold, I'm being told that that's four things? There's nothing in your ear. And, and that there's nothing? There's nothing in my ear. Okay, four things. You know what, let's make it five things. A house rule shouldn't take over the entire game. I mean, your player's experience with the game shouldn't now be all about your house rule. I think when it comes to house rules, in most cases, less is more. Now, it's easy to tumble down the rabbit hole and end up with pages and pages of new rules that you think are fun and exciting, but probably should be an entire game by themselves. I'm not saying that this is what happened to me, but <coughs> yeah, that, that totally happened to me. Here's another way to tell that you've gone too far. If you start to explain it to your group and you can see them slowly slipping into a coma, this is typically a sure sign that you took a wrong turn at Albuquerque. Yeah, that happened too. So today I'm going to give you a number of ideas for house rules that fit the topic of espionage. I don't recommend trying them all at the same time and on the first attempt. Maybe one or two, and if you like them, you keep them and you maybe add more next time. Okay, let's get into it. Introducing a new unit. Spies. Spies cost 9 IPCs to build and have a movement of 2 in friendly territories because they know the lay of the land or any sea zone. Spies are able to move on civilian ships undetected. If you've got questions about this, just watch any Steven Seagal movie. Well, actually, don't do that. Just trust me. They can also move into hostile land territories, but then their movement is reduced to 1 per turn. They don't have an attack or defense value. In fact, spies don't participate in traditional combat in any way. They don't defend a territory and they aren't affected if the territory changes hands. They're only destroyed if they get caught trying to use their special ability or during spy v spy combat. More on that in a minute. First, how to build a spy unit. Spies are purchased as normal but can only be mobilized in a nation's capital. They don't come from a factory and so their creation isn't affected by the condition of an industrial complex in any way. Okay, that's how they're built and how they move around. Now, what can they do? Here's a few options for you to choose from. Reconnaissance, corporate espionage or sabotage, intercept orders, domestic propaganda, and counterintelligence. Spies can only use one of these abilities per turn. Let's start with reconnaissance. Spies can attempt to send attacking units detailed information about the location of defensive units. During the combat move phase, if a spy is in an enemy territory that comes under attack by friendly units, the attacking player may declare that they're using the reconnaissance ability. The defending player will roll one die to try to catch that spy in the act. If the defender rolls a one, the use of that spy's ability fails and the spy is destroyed. If the spy survives, this unit successfully transmits the exact defensive position of the defending forces to the attacking units. This allows all friendly attacking fighters that are attacking to be immune from any aircraft artillery fire and to get a surprise attack during the first round of combat. 
They will fire before any other attacking units. Any hits will be assigned by the defending player, and any units hit are destroyed immediately and will not get to fire back. Pretty cool, right? Here's a quick example of what that might look like. The meeple is the spy. It's time for the German combat move. You can see that they've got a spy in Poland, and they want to use it to take a swipe at those troops in West Russia. They move the spy into the territory and declare that they want to use the reconnaissance ability. The defender tries to roll a 1 to catch that spy in the act. If they're successful, they would kill the spy, like this. If not, we go to the battle board. We get everyone in position, and because the spy's ability was successful, we'll start with the fighters. They roll two dice, and they get one hit. The Russians immediately remove an infantry. That infantry won't get to fire back, so it doesn't go to the casualty zone. Over to the German infantry. They roll and get one hit. The Russians move an infantry to the casualty zone. Three of the Russian infantry fire back, and they get one hit. The tank fires and gets another hit. We remove all the casualties. The Germans decide to press the attack. The reconnaissance ability only gives the fighters the special ability on the first round of combat, so this time we'll start with the infantry. They fire and get no hits. The fighters get two hits. Both infantry to the casualty zone. These infantry will get to fire back, and they get one hit. And the tank, a second hit. We remove all the casualties, and the Germans don't like how this looks anymore, so they're going to retreat with their surviving fighters. As we get the units back on the map, you can see that the fighters still need to find a place to land during non-combat, but the spy will still be in West Russia at the end of the turn. Next, corporate sabotage. Spies may try to damage industrial complexes. If a spy is in a territory that contains an enemy industrial complex, as part of its combat move phase, the attacking player may declare that they want to use their corporate sabotage spy ability. During the conduct combat phase, the defending player will roll one die to try to catch that spy in the act. If he rolls a one, that spy ability fails and the spy is destroyed. If the spy survives, the spy is able to damage valuable enemy components. They blow something up. The attacking player will roll one die. The result will be the damage done to an industrial complex. This could be handy. It's not super powerful, but it's basically the same as a strategic bombing raid. Similar, but a bit heftier, corporate espionage. If a spy is in a territory that contains an enemy-controlled industrial complex, as part of the combat move phase, the attacking player may declare that they want to use their corporate espionage spy ability. During the conduct combat phase, the defending player rolls two dice to try to catch the spy. If either die comes up on a one, the spy ability fails and the spy is destroyed. If the spy survives, the spy is able to steal valuable information from the enemy. The attacking player will roll one die. The result will be the transfer of that number of IPCs from the enemy to the attacking power's treasury. So, higher risk, higher reward. Moving on to a big one. Now this is near the bottom of the rabbit hole, but I think it's a lot of fun. Intercept orders. Spies can attempt to alter the orders sent to enemy troops. Spies can only use this ability during the enemy player's turn, and the spy must be in that player's capital. At the end of the combat move phase, after the attacking player has assigned all of their movements, but before the conduct combat phase begins, a spy may declare that they plan to use the intercept orders ability. Again, this ability can only be used if the spy is in the enemy capital and on that player's turn. Once declared, the player controlling the capital will roll three dice. If any of them come upon a 1, the spy ability fails and the spy is turned. Instead of being destroyed, the spy switches sides. It's now a spy unit for the defending player. Remove the enemy spy unit and replace it with a nation-specific spy unit. That's pretty nasty, but here's what you get if your spy is able to fade all of that. If the spy survives, the player controlling that spy rolls one die. The result of that roll will be divided in half and rounded up. That number will be the number of orders to enemy units that can be intercepted and rewritten. The player controlling the spy may issue new orders to that number of troops. These new orders can be for any enemy units belonging to the player whose capital the spy is in. However, those orders can't cause the enemy unit to break any other rules. All units have the same limitations. The air units have to have a place to land, sea units have to stay in sea zones, etc. And they can't be forced to attack units that are friendly to them. These units can be ordered to new territories to do battle with enemy units. They can be directed to territories where they don't do combat, or they can be ordered not to move at all. This ability only affects the combat move. If the spy sends units into combat, the original controller takes over as soon as the conduct combat phase begins. That's crazy, right? Here's a couple ways that can play out. It's time for the German combat move, but they need to be careful. There's a British spy in the German capital. The Germans move forward with their combat move. They want to take out the guy in Karelia and attack the units in West Russia. They move their units into place 
and they're trying to use the reconnaissance ability of the German spy in West Russia. After the German player has made all of their combat moves, but before any dice are rolled, the UK player says that they want to use the intercept orders ability of their British spy. This means Germany will get a chance to roll three dice to try to catch that spy in the act. They roll and they catch him. This means that that spy no longer is a British spy, but now belongs to the Germans. For the sake of this example, let's assume they missed and move forward with the intercept orders ability. The UK player rolls one die. He gets a five. We'll cut that number in half and round it up to get a total of three. That's the number of German units that the UK can redirect. So what can the British do? They can reroute the transport that came from C-Zone 6, and instead of having the troops dropped off in Karelia, they can send them into the stack of infantry that are in the UK. They can also reroute the bomber that was headed to Karelia, and they can send that to the UK, where it will likely get killed. They've got one unit left they can move. They can move one of the fighters out of the battle in West Russia and send it into that stack of infantry in Caucasus. As you can see, this completely changes the outlook of how this battle is going to go. Remember, once the combat begins, the German player will take over again. So they can retreat at the end of the first round of combat, but they will have to do at least one round of combat. A new unit that costs nine IPCs to build is kind of expensive. So we needed to come up with a way to add more money to the economy. So here's a pretty cool way that we came up with to fit that gap. Domestic propaganda. Spies can improve morale domestically, resulting in increased production strength. If a spy is in its starting capital during the collect income phase, that player may opt to collect one additional IPC for each territory that was captured this turn. The idea is that when a war is going well, that the public's more likely to support it. They buy war bonds, they work harder, etc. Here's a quick example. Germany's going to blitz through four territories for free in Africa, and after crushing the lone soldier in Sudan, will have won five territories this turn. So, assuming that the German spy is in Berlin and that no other territories were captured this turn, the German player can collect an additional five IPCs at the end of the turn. All those abilities are cool, but we needed a way to rein them in. Enter counterintelligence. Counterintelligence. Spies can disrupt the ability of enemy spies. If an enemy spy is present when a spy attempts to use reconnaissance, corporate espionage or sabotage, or intercept orders, the defending player rolls an additional three dice to counter the enemy spy's ability. If any of those dice roll a one, the spy is destroyed. Your spy kicks open a door, running into an enemy spy that's giving a serious boost to the defense. No set of espionage rules would be complete without some good old spy v spy combat. Here's how it works. A spy is the only unit that may attack another spy. During the combat move phase, a spy may move into a territory, land or sea, with an enemy spy and declare an attack on that spy. During conduct combat and before any other combats or any other spy abilities are resolved, the spies do battle. Starting with the attacking player, each player will take turns rolling three dice. Each roll of a one scores a hit and each spy can take up to three hits. Players alternate rolling until one of the spies has taken all three hits. Now, this is a fight to the death, so there's no option for retreat. If the defending spy dies, the unit will get to fire one last time with its dying breath. Neither spy can use abilities this turn, so if the attacking spy is killed, he dies knowing that the defending spy won't be able to try to use his intercept orders ability. This is a lot of fun. Let's look at an example. The Russian spy ended its turn in Italy, and the Germans decided to try to take it out. During the combat move phase, the German spy moved into Italy and declared spy v spy combat against the Russian spy. This is some high drama stuff. We're going to need music for this. All right, perfect. Now we're ready. Let's go. We set up three markers for the attacker and three markers for the defender. Each side takes turn rolling three dice, each of them scoring a hit on a one. The Germans go first, and they get one hit. We take one of the markers down for the Russians. The Russians get to fire back, and they get no hits this time. Back to the Germans. One more hit. Not looking so good for the Russians. The Russians fire and they get two hits. Oh boy. The Germans get the final hit. But the Russians get to fire back and they miss. The Russian spy is destroyed. The German spy lives to fight another day. Remember, a spy can only use one ability a turn and being in spy versus spy combat is an action. So, looking back at the earlier example that we had about intercept orders, the German spy, instead of moving into West Russia, could have moved back into Germany and attacked the UK spy in spy v spy combat. Then, win, lose, or draw, the British spy would not be able to use its intercept orders ability this turn. 
This was a lot of fun to work on. I hope you'll give these rules a try and come back and let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks again to John Bosch for helping me with these rules. If you want to see more videos about house rules when they're ready, they'll be over here. If you want to see our full interview with Larry Harris, here's your link. If you need the full how to play for Access and Allies, here you go. And if you're ready to join Board Game Nation, click here to subscribe. My name is Gary Plevins. This is Board Game Nation. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.